Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to another episode of our series Unveiling Human Treachery and Oppression from Ahlul Bayt al-Islam to today. As we embark on this episode, I invite you to ponder upon a few questions. With over 2 billion Muslims worldwide, how many are familiar with the story of Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil? Six centuries prior to Muslim bin Aqil al-Islam, another man stood alone in a city advocating for the cause of Allah only to find his city turn against him within a day that man was Jesus Christ Hazrat Isa alayhi salam left alone in Jerusalem today followers of Christianity also exceed 2 billion and virtually every one of them is aware of this event Muslim Ibn Aqil was representing the son of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. His significance was in no way lesser than that of Hazrat Isa. In fact, in some aspects, his importance was even greater as he was representing the cause of creation of the universe, the leader of the youth of heaven, the grandson of the last Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, less than 15% of Muslims around the world have ever, have ever heard about Muslim bin Akhil, let alone the events that have unfolded. If I am to guess, less than 5% of the Muslims of the 2 billion Muslims are aware of the treachery that befell on Muslim. And why is this so? Why is there no remembrance of this event and the many other atrocities that befell upon Ahlubayt al-Islam. In today's episode, we delve into the depths of historical realities and their distortions, a topic that has been shrouded in controversy and misunderstanding for centuries. History as we know it is often written by the victors. It is a narrative that is carefully crafted to serve the interests of those in power. This is not a new phenomena but a recurring pattern that we see throughout the chronicles of time the history of islam and the ahl bayt al islam is no exception to this rule hazrat isa is remembered because the rulers accepted christianity and his teachings and history were pushed across the regions for their political gains as his true teachings were masked and distorted but at least by them becoming christians they were able to push the teachings of hazrat isa and today everyone knows hazrat isa alayhi salam even though in the wrong sense for the most part his teachings have been distorted the ahl bayt al islam the, the holy family of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been victims of this distortion their story their struggles and their sacrifices have been manipulated and misrepresented it their atrocities coming come committed against them have been downplayed and in some cases completely erased from the collective memory of the muslim community isn't it ironic the very people who were closest to the prophet who were his family his confidants and his staunchest supporters have been relegated to the sidelines of islamic history This is not an accident but a deliberate attempt to sow seeds of doubt and confusion by those who were in power. The answer lies in the narrative that have been built and propagated over centuries. There are two opposing narratives today in Islam, one that says nothing happened, one that was laid out and defined by the ruling authority, those who were in power, those caliphs who came and usurped power from the Ahlul Islam, and the other narrative paints a very gruesome picture of atrocities against the household of the Prophet after his death. And this narrative for example is painted in the movie The Lady of Heaven which shows this alternate view of reality and the true view of reality. When you talk to a non-Shia about historical realities, the conversation typically unfolds in a certain way. They ask for a logic, then narrations, then they question the authenticity of these narrations. When you provide multiple sources to justify your point, they argue that these stories are fabricated by Shias. They question how can Ahlul Bayt could be so weak given their divine authority. 
But let's consider the prophets of Allah. There were prophets who were killed by their own people, like the Jews killed their prophets. And Prophet Lut who was put in a very weak spot as mentioned in Surah Hud verse 77, Prophet Lut expressing his distress and discomfort when he was faced with the wickedness of the people of his place. Now, Let's look at the event of Saqifah. After the death of the Prophet, the right of Imam Ali al-Islam was taken over. The people of Medina who were supposed to be the supporters of the Prophet's family did not do anything. The door of Sayyida Fatima Zahra, the house of Sayyida Fatima Zahra, the house of Ali al-Bayat al-Islam was burned down and her unborn baby was killed. Imam Ali al-Islam was dragged to the court. All these events negate the narrative that nothing happened to Ali al-Bayat al-Islam and that there was no cover-up when you bring up these realities and they are convinced they act like the people of namrud at the time of ibrahim who allah says when ibrahim gave them arguments against the idols allah says that they realized the truth in their hearts but still decided to throw ibrahim into the inferno Similarly, the Nuan Shias, when defeated, ultimately say that Allah has put locks on their hearts. No matter what you do, no matter what we tell them, no matter how many proofs we give to them, they will not be impacted. Look, how shaitan pushes people into disobeying Allah's laws. And this is the promise that shaitan did that he will take the majority of the people of the Muslims to the hell with him. And they will not be thankful to the blessings of Allah. They will not be thankful to the blessing of Allah. That is the Ahlul Bayt that Allah has given to the entire humanity, entire universe. In conclusion. The distortion of historical realities is not just an academic issue, but a matter of faith and identity. It shapes our understanding of our religion, our community, and ourselves. As we continue to explore the history of al Bayt al-Islam and the wider Muslim community, let us strive for truth, justice, and understanding. The counter-narratives help us identify the truth. There is not only a single narrative pushed by those Serb caliphs. Let us challenge the status quo, not for the sake of rebellion, but for the sake of pursuit of truth. Let us remember that the sacrifices of Ali Abayat al their steadfastness in the face of adversity, and their unwavering commitment to the principles of Islam, is something that we should appreciate and realize and think that this is something coming from Allah. Let us honor their legacy by seeking knowledge, asking questions, striving for justice. And it is our responsibility as we are alive. It is not the responsibility of our forefathers who have passed by and they're in their graves. They're responsible for their own doing. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Unveiling Human Treachery and Oppression from Ahlul Bayt al-Islam today. We hope that this discussion has provided you with some food for thought and has encouraged you to delve deeper into the chronicles of our history, of the history of Islam. Until next time, please, uh, we'll talk about, think about these topics. We're going to talk about more of these examples. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.